All right. Welcome back, guys, as we are ready for the final showdown here. Sugo taking on Nimu in a rematch, looking for a little bit of redemption. Hopefully, we can read Nimu's unpredictability a bit better than we saw in series number one. Yeah, exactly. Rematch. Nimu looked pretty damn strong in the first series. I think now Sugo's more comfortable. He's, he's yeah. looked pretty clean versus dark. Really, really nice control. I, I definitely think Sugo has a chance, but Nimu has been doing exceptionally well. Played really well versus Terror. I think he may be a slight favorite versus Sugo at this point. So I think that, so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So let, with that said, let's get into our first game. First map again, going to be Circuit Breakers. All right, so tough, tough starting map here for uh, Protoss. So what Sugo has in mind, but so far we've seen Sugo basically look to play relatively standard in most of the games. We haven't seen uh, too crazy, although given the way Nimu's been playing and the way Dark's been playing, he's, he's been forced to play fairly reactionary. Yeah, I, he has been showing the gateway play. I think this is good versus somebody like Nimu. Keep it more even-ish instead of just Sugo reacting the whole time to Nemo, where Nemo is just going to have control of the flow the whole game. I think Sugo is kind of counteracting that by going for the gateway first. So let's get into our first game. Let's see if Sugo is going to go for that gateway expand. The first yeah. map is going to be Circuit Breakers. All right. Right in the bottom left, we have our Bulgarian Zerg. It is named. And in the top right hand corner, as the white Protoss, we have Sugo. So you mentioned and briefly that you find this map a little bit difficult for Protoss. So what? So what do you? Th what do you think makes this map difficult for Protoss? Uh, it's just kind of open. It's exposed. There's a lot of bases that Zerg can attack, and there's a lot of just different attacks that come through a lot of different areas. Like, for instance, trying to take that third base, Zerg has a natural three different areas he can go through. And then, of course, you've got the fact that the third base, the most natural third base, has no gas. And, well, Protoss really likes to get Yeah, that's that's also my experience when I play Protoss. Oh, wow. we got to say that we've got an oh. in-base pylon for Sugo. Deviation. Sugo is wanting to uh, dictate the tempo of this game for once. Yeah, so this time he's going to be putting on a, bit, a lot of pressure with the Zealot. We can be pretty confident that this Zealot is not going to be made and sit back in his base. Now, Sugo is in Nas clan. I think is it Yeti Nas? Yeti is a European Protoss. And in the NA vs. EU series, he did pull out a one base Reaver play. Now, because I think they know each other, we could definitely see that here. Yesterday, we saw Ghost of Dark go for two gate Zealot. I feel like that's kind of more all in-ish than going for this Reaver tech. At least you're going to have the power punch with the AoE. So I do think that it's more likely that Sugo's going to go for tech play here as opposed to two gate. But as I say, that there's a... Yeah. All right, so let's see. I mean, we've seen basically nothing but Zealot based early over Sugo, and obviously that in the game. Uh, so we'll see what Sugo can do here with his micro. Of course, 12 patch, and he does have cross bonds. So, given that, I don't expect him to have terrible trouble with this, uh, and it should be pretty good for Nemo. Yeah, so, two gate, obviously a very old school build. We're going back to even, like, 1998, that's how long ago this build goes back to. So, what do you think is the most common follow-up to two gate? Like, how many zealots are we going to be, be building? Are we going to stay on two gate while teching? Is he going to take a nexus behind this? What do you think we can expect from Sugo? I mean, you know, this is this is not 15, 1600 play. Given where we're at, I'm expecting we'll see some sort of a tech follow-up. That's what we've been seeing uh, the most in terms of high-level uh, PVCs that I can think of recently. And the same trend has also become much stronger recently in PvP as well. Uh, there used to be a lot of five zealot nexus, and now it's a lot of three zealots and, and straight into tech. And I think we'll just see tech because otherwise your your gas is just so late that you don't really have any options. Yeah, so yesterday, Ghost of Dark built a lot of them. I think even 10. We didn't even see gas. I think he did go for a Nexus, but I, I do agree with your assessment that we could definitely see some tech play. 
This probe is already at the ramp now. That makes yeah. me think he wants to build a nexus, but it is blocking, so it could just be trying to block, but I yeah. really think that this is Although no nexus. gas up yet, so yeah, there's a good chance we will actually see a nexus. Yeah, so Sugo most likely going to go for a nexus here. He's going to get his econ going a little harder before he wants to go into those high-tech units from Protoss. Now Nemo, he has that third hatch. Now it's at the mineral only. This is a deviation that oh, he's actually, done all the other ones. Let's take a look at the bottom of the map, though. Yeah, what's this? This looks like proxy gates. Is it going to be three, yeah, four yeah, gates? Yeah, four gates. Four Whoa. gates. Well, uh, proxy. Whoa! Oh, man. Wait, Nemo just canceled his third hatch. Yeah. So how did he know that this is going on? I don't think he had anything. Did, did the Ling get... I don't think the Ling got close enough to see it yet. The Overlord's... Well, and somehow he has determined that this is an all-in. And this is perfect because that hatchery 100% was going to die. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Nemo's still here. This is still a, a somewhat threatening amount of zealot. Two probes yep. pulled with this. Uh, just one sunken for right now. And Nemo's basically making pure links. But, of course, Sugo is pure all-in with this. He's just sitting on basically control group of probes. So Sugo is very all in here. Unlike Ghost of Dark yesterday, at least we have a decent probe saturation to follow back on. But he is hard committed to these zealots. Now, Nemo still doesn't know about the third and fourth gate at the bottom, but he must suspect something is up. Because why yeah, else would he cancel that half? And I, I guess I guess the idea here is it's and he didn't have fast speed, so he just felt like, well, I can't have three hatches again, so that's probably why he did this. Um, but he doesn't know there's four gates, and he's only on one sunken. And at some point, when you get, like, you know, ten zealots in here, these lings are basically going to line up against them. So Nemo's going to need to find this at some point and add another sunken. Yeah, Unless he gets speed kicking in here soon. But now we're getting quite a few zealots, and this is initial very good engagement here from Sugo. Nemo, Nemo's lings are not fighting effectively at all, and Sugo is getting much better, uh, much better trade here from Nemo on the micro. And look at this, just one sunken against five lings remaining. Yeah, there's just not enough from Nemo right here. Speed is so close to being done. But I am worried for Nemo that we don't have Sunkins up. There's how many Zealots? Eight Zealots? Yeah, speed's gonna kick in here. That. And I mean, three hatches with Speedlings obviously shuts down a two gate, but two gate slow lots, that's just so much Zealot maps with Zealots on top of the Sunken. Sunken is gone now, and there's just, I think, too many Zealots, although Sugo's getting a little bit sloppy here with his control uh, after having a great first engagement. And now it looks like for the moment, Nemo has enough Zerglings here to force Sugo back, and this is not broken yet. Yeah, so Sugo has not broken it just yet, and Nemu might think that the pressure's over at this point, but we know there's two more gates at the bottom. Yeah. I am getting kind of worried because we're floating 400 minerals. I feel like he needs to build a sunken. Well, maybe not. He has an overwhelming amount of Zerglings. Yeah, he's got a lot here. He's looking in for a surround, trying to pin him against the wall. He's getting better arc. And there we go. This is a little bit better micro from Sugo, but still quite a few links here from Nemo. Nemo. I keep calling him Nemo. So Sugo... Like, these gates are exposed. If Nemo finds that, those gates are going to go down immediately. There's just flat out too many lanes for Nemo at this yeah, point. The, different, the difference now, though, now let's see. If he can get the surround and finally clean these up, there we go. He finally gets the surround he needs. Uh, but the difference here is Nemo has been making non-stop links. Uh, he's been needing to. And Sugo has been starting to probe behind this. So Sugo has a much more robust economy than, than Nemo, Nemo has right now. Um, but with four gateways, Sugo should just be able to go to his ramp and defend. And he can actually continue to trickle Zealots in from the lower gate if Nemo goes all the way across the map. Although Sugo is losing some reinforcements out here on the map from Israeli gateways. That is true. My, my main issue for Sugo here is that... He's been consistently losing the zealots at the bottom, but he can't sink the zealots from the top because if yeah, they move out, they get surrounded. So you're having this issue of you have a lot of zealots that are critical mass, but they're not together. All right, and Nemo's going to send some links in from back around side. There's nothing here. All this is annoying now that it's going to start to be links running around in your main. And I don't know why Sugo is going cross map. I guess he wants Nemo, Nemo to uh, come back and uh fight him that way so he can get his his, his nexus up but i think Nemo can just kind of play around this at this point especially because he's adding a creep colony getting a fourth hatch and just making a ton of lings sugo's got a probe pull here but his zealots are surrounded and about to go down and then the lings will just start needing probes although it looks like they will die and actually sugo is going to get a little bit of what he wants here uh but plenty of defense for Nemo. plenty of lings sunken is about to finish and I don't even think Sugo can afford to run in here. And being this far out of the map with slow lots, if Nimu's Ling Mask gets high enough, Nimu just goes into the surround here and devours these Zealots. Well, there's still seven Zealots here, so that's a 
high amount. These links aren't going to be able to deal with them. Links are streaming across the map. Oh, where are Sugo Zealots and his mains? They're oh at the God. mid oh He's my gonna God. get on top of the ramp. Yeah, yeah. Well, Nemo has finally confirmed the gateways at the bottom, but he's just streaming to the main. The Zealots are out of position. Sugo, you gotta get out of position. Sugo's gonna have some sort of a counter here, but this is so many lings. They're gonna be able to get surrounds. Probe is being pulled, but the lings are already on top, getting good arc on several of these Zealots, softening them up tremendously. And if he retreats to the minerals, then the lings have position over the gateways. I feel like the only option now is for Sugo to counter and hope he can do something, but he's going to start losing almost all of his probes and tremendous damage here for Nemo. Unrecoverable damage, uh, I think, pretty much at this point, unless Sugo can just do amazing wonders. But look how many Ling's four hatches are at the natural. Definitely too late for Sugo here. His mineral line is devoured. Yeah, so Nemo's going to go up 1-0. He's got enough to stop the Zealots at his natural. Just a flood yeah, of Lings non-stop from him. He's not Great fighting against Duncan. He just doesn't even care. He's like, I got so many Lings. Boy, you're dead. Yeah, and so Sugo's one game away of being eliminated. So again, there's another case that of the, you know, kind of unorthodox player dealing with the more standard player trying to play unorthodox. I mean, Nemo didn't even know that that gateway was there. Those two gates were there. And he still defended pretty comfortably. He just, you know, is more used to these kind of positions. And you can tell he just knew the right amount of links to send in different places, how to kind of pull Sugo around. And he just basically just pulled him apart. Yeah, you said it earlier that they definitely, or Nemo definitely has more experience in these chaotic games. You can tell because Sugo Zealots at the end, just all over the place, was never able to sync them up. So, and I have to admit too, there was, was some early points where I don't know if it was misprobes and he just didn't have enough economy for four gates or if it was miss macro, but I didn't feel like there was a steady four gate reinforcement. Uh, and some of those initial engages, it just didn't feel like his Zelda cat was growing the way I expected because I was a little worried after Nemo took that first engage that was a bit where Sugo definitely had better control and it was looking scary. But then it just didn't feel like enough zealots came in from Sugo. So I am I'm wondering if he didn't have enough money or, or missed a little bit there. Uh, he may have missed. I think really the issue was it's cross map. You could never get them together. And that's why it always just seemed like such a low count. But regardless, great job from Nemo. We're going to be going into game two. Don't know what the map is. Hoping we get something new. Do we, uh, maybe we, okay. It is going to be in the way of an Eddie again. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Same maps. All right, so if you're ready, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, so we're going into In the Way of an 80. Game two, Sugo versus Nemo. Nemo one game <laughs> away from making it out of this group. I did say Nemo there. Yeah, I think we're both actually calling him Nemo sometimes. Nemo, Nemo, we apologize. I don't know why we keep saying Nemo occasionally, but we apologize. All right, in the bottom left, we've got the Bulgarian Hope. He's shocking a lot of people in the chat right now. It is Nemo. And in the top left here, up against the ropes of elimination, we have the NA Protoss, Sugo. So this map I do, um, we were talking about Circuit Breaker being a hard map to get the third base. Of course, Eddie, not an easy map to get a third base, but when you're playing versus players that are all inning constantly, at least Sugo will have that very good Ling type wall that he pulled out versus Dark. Uh, yeah. I wonder if he's going to change it up this time. Is this the game where we don't go forward? I feel like that's... No. It, the gate is not working. No. The two gate definitely wasn't working. Even the four gate wasn't working. The gate expands versus Nemo. Nemo. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Also not, not, not really doing much for him. Uh, just maybe even playing a little bit too safe. A little too, a little too scared sometimes. Obviously not the last game, but you know, if you go four gates and play scared, I don't know what to say about that. Oh, I can't wait for this text. Don't uh, have I thought he was going to talk about the game as opposed to the internet. So we do I'm have a gateway. For a gateway. This is... Yeah, I, of course, I'm not a Protoss player, so maybe gateway play is coming back into fashion. I am surprised that we're seeing it every single time. But sometimes, even if something's not working, if that's what you've practiced, you got to go with your build that you practice. Don't, don't just change it because it's not working. Oh, if yeah, you yeah. have only played a build one time, it's most likely you're going to mess it up. So I don't blame Sugo for going for for this build, but 
so far, N Nimu's had a great counter to it. Yep, another 12 hatch from Nimu here. Yeah, 12 hatch. Now, last game we did see Nimu put his third hatch at the mineral only on Circuit Breaker. It was different from all the other games where he had a third hatch at his natural. I wonder if he's going to pull that out here. Well, we'll see. We've got a drone heading out, and then given the mineral set out at, I think it's headed to a distant base. Right, there goes that drone. This could be a scouting drone. Oh, it might just be scouting, yeah. It is. Or it could be, again, he hasn't scouted yet, so he may be sending this up here because he wants to take this base, but unfortunately for him, this <laughs> is Hugo's be... base. You can't take it. Well, he did that. He did once. He might do it again. Oh, he did. That That is true. He's Katz <laughs> Jr., but unfortunately that Nexus is up. No, yeah. Is Katz the same as, like, Katz Paw? I don't think so. Katz is a... Uh -huh. uh, a uh, very old school brutal player now. Starcraft two root owner. Oh, 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 well, that cats. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cats. That cats. Yeah, yeah. Starcraft two root. I'm player. with you. So Nemo and... has taken mid left. Yep. Only two. Only two pairs of links out here from Nemo. Um, but again, you know, I think uh, Sugo is going to get one chance to dive in here. Maybe get a drone, and then just needs to go park behind the minerals. Oh, okay, okay. Almost two slow reactions, but does get the drone pull. And yep, Zealot's just gonna head behind the minerals. And oh, he's gonna leave the probe. That's gonna make a very easy kill here. Oh, he's trying to come back in, and Nemo just oh, barely reacts in time. Yeah, and now it's getting glitched into a position. It doesn't really want to go. It's got to here and see where he takes it. But I don't think he's gonna be able to get Whoa. behind the minerals again. And losing a few free hits there. Sugo's so two probes moved across the map, tracing. Three the probes. Oh, yeah, yeah, two probes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a lot of. I mean, two probes. I mean, he does have decent saturation, but Protoss in the early game do cut yeah. a lot of probes. Yeah, to... timing is everything, too, in this matchup. So, you know, you cut 20 minerals. That's, that's a few seconds lost on some of your timings. And this Zealot is doing nothing but just getting bumped by these lanes. It's basically... Oh, Nimu actually attacking his pool for a second. Oh, yeah, no, but... the Zealot comes out on top of the drone. It doesn't even do anything. Zero lanes does Nimu. And now we got a few lanes up here harassing. Oh, no, he slips some in. And he can do a little damage on the cannon. It's certainly not going to be enough to stop the cannon, but it is enough to get a probe kill, and even that's worth it. Yeah, that's is very nice from Nimu. Now, even though that Zealot didn't get really much damage done, it has confirmed no gas for Nimu. So again, Nimu, we're approaching four or five minutes here with no gas. Yep. We've seen him play through before, and the cannon is up, so he can't do anything against the wall. And it looks like Nimu is going to place a fourth hatchery over here, just third base. And then we'll see if he does five hatch, no gas, or if he does the same thing as last time. If he does, he's going to slap down two gas right about now. Yeah, he'll be getting his gas pretty soon. We see Sugo taking a fast gas at his natural. Definitely going to be a Stargate build. There is the Stargate. Now we've been seeing... I think we're going to see five hatch, no gas from Nimu. Feels like there should be a hatchery making. Minerals are awfully there. high for nothing else going on. Yeah, there needs to be a hatch or gas or something. Even though... Nemo's econ is going to be really good because he's powering so hard. The, like I talked about earlier, is there is a point in the game where, sure, your econ's good, but Protoss is building up that zealot count constantly. All right, that's no gas. If, if you're too slow to start building hydras, it kind of just snowballs because you weren't building hydras fast enough. Still no gas. I'm, I'm surprised. 530, no gas. Is it going to be a six hatch? This is si Somebody six. Six hatch, no chat. gas? Somebody huh. in the chat that's Zerg, tell me what this is. I've never seen this. Yeah, is Jay Yoon here? This is the actual drone man. We talked about Jay Yoon being drone man. I think Nebo might take that crown. Yeah, six hatch no gas. I've never even heard of. I mean, I don't. I have no idea what he's gonna do about this courser. Is he gonna make a spore? There's an Evo, right? Yeah, there's an Evo. Okay, so he's just gonna spore against the initial Sare and have some crazy Hydra timings. Wait a minute. Did I just see an evolution chamber? Yeah, he's got a spore. Like he has to spore. Oh, he's spore. I was like, dude, we've got an evolution chamber before gas. What's going on? <laughs> Otherwise, there's just no way. I mean, six hatch before, even five hatch before gas is like cutting it close. But six hatch before gas, uh, there's just no way you could defend the Corsair. It would, it would start masking overlords. Gonna put down a second creep colony. And then I'll be curious, because I've never seen six hatch before gas. So I'll be very curious to see what Hydra timing gets out of this. I'm assuming this has got to be Hydra play. Well, we we thought that last game when he was on true. in the way of Eddie, and he true. did open Hydra initially, but then he went into a Muta switch. Now he does have good econ, so he's able to get the double gas pretty fast. Probably even take the third gas pretty fast. And Sugo, I'm not sure if he's really gonna have any place to attack because 
the way Nemo's set up, this is probably going to be mass Sunkins. If I was Sugo at this point, I may even think about going mass Goon with range because it's you're highly confident it's going to be mass Sunken at this point, right? So if you can just get a ton of Goons, you can range the Sunkins with a little yeah, Zealot support. Scary. I think that would be, be great. And you know with with uh, no gas that link speed's going to be slow, although Nemo is prioritizing link speed here before his Hydra. I'm just very curious to see where this build goes. This is, you know, totally kind of off the grid. So we do... I, I'm not sure if this is a blunder. I, I'm pretty sure it is a blunder because of how important gas is, but Suko unfortunately only has two probes in his gas at his main. That's really going to hurt him getting those temp and very important Templars, Templars okay. out. And is there, are there going to be Dragoons? No, there's not going to be Dragoons. He's just, just going to go into standard play here against this. Because I was going to say, if there was Dragoons that came down for Dragoon pressure, uh, this Hydra Den is very forward, and that would be extremely disruptive if Nemo intends to go into Hydras. But not going to be the case. And these Zealots need to be very careful here. I mean, Nemo does have Speedlings out. He does have a Sunken. I don't really feel like they can get a Oh, There's way too many links here. He can easily get surrounded if he's not careful. Yeah, there's so many links. And this Evolution Chamber, he even almost... He's halfway to plus one armor, so it's going to counteract yeah. the plus one from oh. Sugu pretty soon. Oh, Sugu's double Archoning. Wow, is he afraid of... What is going on here? I don't think you want double Archon against this. Well, you may, because the Lings are going to have plus one I armor guess pretty soon. Made. All he's seen is Lings at this point. Based yeah, on that's, last that's game, true. Nemo made how many Lings last game? It was infinite. So Nemo might be going for some weird style where he's going mass Ling with fast upgrades with Hive Tech behind it. Yeah, that's I guess, I guess that's possible. But then why make the Hydra Knight? He's going to make a couple lurkers for defense if he needs them. Although Nemo's wasting a few links here and not really getting on top of the doing anything. So this is a bit... I don't know where Nemo's attention is focused right now, but it's obviously not on that. So go, oh, he got a Burrow lane, though. He's got Burrow. Ah, uh, we got some Burrow play coming in. So we're going to have mass Burrow lanes. Or at least being positioned around the map. No, never mind, not necessarily Burrow, but they are, like, positioned. It looked like he was going to make, like, a ling, uh, ring of lings. Well, Nemo's got to be very careful now because plus one armor has yeah. not kicked in just yet. And Protoss has got one sunken. one. He's only yeah, got one there's sunken, not much yeah. Defense. There's a huge opportunity for Sugo to go in here. Lurker aspect isn't done yet. Yeah, he just started that a little while ago. Just right about when he attacked with the wings is when he started it. So it, lurkers are not going to be done uh, in time to face this if Sugo does decide to commit. Yeah, unfortunately for Sugo, it doesn't look like he's going to commit. That means plus one armor just kicked in. Huge upgrade yeah. for Zerg at this point. And yeah. Sugo missing his window. And I don't know, look at supplies. It's 81 to 95. That's pretty good for Zerg. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, I think as long as... Although the only thing here is this third base. These Sunkins are both very forward Sunkins. And that leaves no defense. Then uh, Sugo can go right into the mineral line. But it looks like Sugo just doesn't want to commit here. I really think he could pressure this third base a little bit more. He doesn't have to go in and get caught in a choke, and it's just one sunken. Yeah, so I have found the hive nest. It's at the third base. This is going to be fast hive tech like we saw last time. I, it could be guardians. We have the spire at the bottom. I don't think so because we have lurker aspect coming in. Probably going to be mass ling with crack. I, I feel like Sugo really missed an opportunity there. I think he's just a little bit, maybe just a little bit scared. He moves aggressive. He's had enough. He See that sometimes when players feel like they're playing someone better they're just like oh my god this guy's gonna block this and i, I think sugo could have put on a lot of pressure and forced a little bit more out from nemo but now that that window is definitely passed yeah he definitely missed the window with plus one but i do love sugo's follow-up here is we're seeing reavers come out with a lot of dragoons this is something that i really wish aru had done yesterday versus jayun jayun really surviving by the skin of his teeth just barely if aru had any amount of reaver mixed in he could have definitely busted through. And this would work very good versus what Nemo's doing. Nemo, he's got mass Ling Lurker. There's going to have yeah. no engagement onto the Reaver. Yep, and that'll add a little bit of splash and along with the Archons. Like, it's going to be pretty hard to run in there on Reaver. You know, three or four Archons in the mix. And there aren't going to be any Hydra to, to go for the Reaver Snipes. So this Burrow Ling is doing work. It's delayed the oh, yeah. Necklace for oh, so yeah. long. It's going to force cannons. There's no Observer either. Oh, and a Lurk's going to get over oh here, too. Oh my gosh. Is he going to put a Zealot on top and just do that? Because he could he could do that with the Archons. He could just put a Zealot on top and an uh, Archon shot. Yeah, that is one although, of the things you can do with Although the he can't do that with the Burrowed Lane, I guess. It's too much surface area. Like, he would not be able to find the right spot. He could do it for the Lurker, because of where the Spines tell you, you know, informing you of the Lurker's location. But the Burrowed Lane, I guess you can't really put a Zealot on top of. Because you yeah, don't know exactly where it is. Too small. If, if he found the Zealot, uh, the Ling, 
that would my mind would be blown. But, re yeah. but anyways, we've got a huge army for Sugo. I would like to see two. Sugo. I mean, he wants a third base, right? So I would kind of like to see him just take the island because he has a shuttle out. Um, but now he's got an obs out, so he can't clear this out. Yeah, this is Eddie. So if he had a shuttle, he can take top middle. And, and of course, likely, the other thing, yeah. the other thing with that is, shuts down. yeah, being hive, like you know, you're not going to have uh, OB speed and, and drops out anytime soon. So it makes it pretty safe to take that base. Yeah, so I, I would like that play if he could take top middle, maybe even just double expand. But I am getting worried now because Nemo's Hive has kicked in. I'm trying to check if we have Crack. Crack is done. Yeah, we also have be. plus two armor coming in, so he's going to counteract Sugo's upgrades. He's even going to have plus one. He already has plus one weapon on his link. Yeah, so that is really scary. Chewing through. Because you got to remember, every plus one on that represents like a 20% increase in, in damage output, which is really absurd. Yeah, and because of how Protoss is with their shield, shield's always taking full damage. Even units like Archons, which counter Lings, all of a sudden Lings are just going to start massacring them. But the right, army so, from Sugo is massive. Yeah, it is. It's a very it's a very large supply advantage. I don't think there's Defiler tech out. Uh, and there's this Reaver in here. Um, so Sugo can't run in with the Zealots like this, I don't think. But I don't think uh, Nimu is expecting the Reaver. Yeah, I don't think so either. A lot of Protoss players I see, they just stay on Gateway Man tech for the entire game. I love Reaver play here. All right, and Nimu runs in, but good pickups on the show. And way too much Protoss here for Nimu to attack directly with his Lings. But that is quite a deep spread of Lurker. It's going to take quite a while, and it looks like Nimu might have enough gas that he can almost just keep making Lurkers at the rate these Reavers can kind of clean them out. Yeah, it, it's true. He has a ton of Lurkers. He's even building He's got more gas, gas too. Lurkers. Look how deep it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he was just morphing like another six. And he's still got 500 gas in the bank. Oh, Nimu wants to surround here. This is a bold move without uh, Defilers and attacking into all this splash. He's not able to shred the Zealots, and I don't really think this is working out for him. I think he's wasting some money here. Yeah, this seems but like But still, look how many lurkers there are. Sugo is running in at this. He still can't. There's way too many lurkers. Normally, Zerg sends in a control group of lurkers, and you're like, oh, okay, I can attack, but not this time. No, nope, here's just so and many And there's still more wall, just a wall of lurkers, but again, it's getting... There's a lot of Dragoons here, and the Archons are still alive. There's actually still a decent number of Zealots still alive, and the Reavers are still alive. Sugo is controlling well here. I don't know, all the Zealots are getting shredded, and remember, yeah, these are Cracklings on six or seven hatchery. Yeah, now it's thinning out. Now it's thinning out. Are there reinforcements? Why are there not these Zealot reinforcements? He's making more Archons, but he's at the tipping point, and he hasn't reinforced fast enough. Oh, and we whoa, just... suddenly the replay went to 2x. Whoa, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, what just happened? Well, it all right, looks so now like... he's trying to reinforce. It looks like Nemu held. Like, yeah, the, yeah. we don't have enough Dragoons at this point. Sure, we have the Reavers, but the Archons yeah. are gone. The, I'm trying to... Nemu almost has plus two weapon on his link. So I'm not positive. I'm not, I'm not confident Sugo could have won that with reinforcements, but I definitely feel like he was over-microing and not reinforcing cost him any chance he had to get something done there. And of course, now he's got uh, no fourth base, and he's mining out at two bases, so he's against a five-base Nemo, so it's pretty grim. It's one of those classic... Protoss moment where Protoss's army looks really scary, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't know if he still, if he could have won there, but he definitely needed to reinforce. But he's going in again. Now there's definitely way fewer lurkers. Yeah, they just have too much for Sugo at this point. It's pure Ling at this point. Oh, Muta transition right now, though. Interesting. He's trying to get Greater Spire. It's morphing right now. He does not have the ability to make Guardians just yet. All he has to do is really hold on. He's got. Five, six base, but Sugo's army is huge. He needs to reinforce though. Okay, there it goes. He's yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Now Sugo's reinforcing, and yeah, where did all go? He had more, I felt like. Are they defending other bases? No. Uh, Nemo's expanding like crazy around the map though, but Sugo is pressuring here at the heart of Nemo, Nemo, and you know, the hive is exposed if he does start to break into that natural, and with only two lurkers and reavers to fight the sunkens, everything is going to kind of hinge on getting these guardians out in time. Yeah, well, you can tell that Nemo's, I guess, decided he can't fight out on the open map because he's got a yep. bunch of stuff going down to his natural, even the third base. But because he took this third base so fast, look, his his minerals are yeah. pretty low there. There's not much saturation uh, at bottom right there. Running in without, without, without lurkers. Uh, where is the Greater Spire? I don't think there's enough here. Maybe if the Mutas can get the, the Reavers down, 
But the Zealots are running in here. These Sunkins are going to fall. And where are the reinforcements? Sugo, you're, you, the lack of reinforcements is killing me here. I think Nimu is going to hold this. But with reinforcements, would he have held this? I don't see units streaming across the map despite this massive eco. There's... How is Nimu's supply so high? He's at 115. Yeah, it's like he's, he's got, got no nothing. Units. There's yeah, got to be Ultra weird. somewhere. Yeah, what's, what's building? Let me see what the building hatchery is. I don't know. No, he's making the Guardians now. I don't, yeah, I don't understand where his supply is at all. What? It's only three Guardians. It's not very much. He even gonna lose his hive, but luckily for him, he at least has the Ultra Den and... Oh, he's Ooh, got Guardians all over the place, though. This is gonna be like a 360-degree Guardian surround. <laughs> but actually... But Sugo's not reinforcing. Sugo, why are you not reinforcing this? What? I guess because he's got all Zealots and he doesn't want to reinforce against Guardians, but it's still a weird decision. If he would have been reinforcing this, he would have already been inside the main killing stuff. Well, there's no supporting cast for these guardians. They're gonna die, but there's so many lings. Yeah, now there's enough. And Nimu, he's saw a head in supply. And Sugo, he's mined out at his main. He's essentially mined out as natural. But he's having the same issue. Sugo has it as natural. Like, why? The reinforcements, ah! And now Nimu's got, what, seven bases and Sugo's on three. So it's, it's Sugo's pretty dead now. Yeah, it's the same issue that Aru had versus Jayun is we didn't take bases fast enough. And now Nimu's, He's still on four or five base, essentially mining. Sugo's on one. And we yeah. lost all of our key tech <laughs> units there. We lost Archons. We lost Dragoons. We lost the shuttle with both of the Reavers. We have one Templar out. That means we got one storm maximum. Well, the Reaver's here, but if Sugo wanted to attack bottom right, oh. I feel like he should have attacked. There's no there. OBS. There's no OBS. Oh my God. He actually had a scary moment because there's only two lurkers here. He definitely killed the, I don't know what you call this, fourth base, fifth base, but he's got no OBS with this army, and, well, Nimu's got a lot of links here, but there's not a lot of splash. Uh, and the upgrade should be pretty good for Nimu. Yeah, Nimu's... Two, two against 2-0, oh, yeah, that's pretty good links. Just needs to get rid of the Reaver. Here's some Scourge now getting rid of the Shuttle Reavers down. So now Ling Flood will take this out, especially without any sort of... Oh, okay, yeah, there's one Ops here now. Uh, but that's not going to live long, and Sugo's just getting cleaned up here. Yeah, so Sugo just... He, he's just fizzling out. We have 150 supply Zerg. Zerg even sees the fourth base being taken. He's on like 10 hatcheries. He's gonna go kill at any moment now. Yeah. So Nemo's gonna make it out in second place. Him and Terror gonna be getting out of Group C. Very nicely done from Nemo. Yeah, I mean, I was honestly so really, really surprised that Sugo's second attack was almost scarier than his first attack. But I just, I mean, I, I can't say that Sugo would have won with reinforcements, but oh man, both of those attacks would have been way scarier if he would have reinforced. But he had, uh, at both times, almost two control groups or more sitting back at his nat that were not used to reinforce. Well, Sugo has gotten his fourth base up, but it's just a matter of time. Once this army gets yeah. cleaned up, we're going to be sending in the Ling Ultra. There's there the GG from GG. Sugo. Wow, Nimu, the sleeper. Well, at least the sleeper for me, because I don't know this guy, but he's pretty damn good. Really looking forward to his play in the future rounds. And for those of you that were sleeping on Nemo, you gotta be, or at least the players, you gotta be worried about this guy. Like he played weird in the first series. Yeah, he played weird in our last game, but it was more macro based. So very tricky player to get play against. Definitely, although I said, I feel like he definitely had chances in the second game. You know, the first game uh, with the with the four gate or whatever, you know, Nemo uh, was just better. And, and he was kind of just better in the second game, but the, the lack of reinforcements and some of the opportunities that... The second game felt like a few more missed opportunities from Sugo. Yeah, the reinforcements might have turned the tides. I don't know. Nemo had so much production, but it is very possible that Sugo could have busted in there. He definitely had a window with that initial Zealot Archon when he had plus one. We had one and Sunken I, at each base. And I'm just thinking of that second attack. You know, he was breaking into the main base. He killed the Sunkens in the natural. Uh, and, and he killed most of the Guardians, right? And if he would have been reinforcing with those Zealots, he actually would have been into the main a little bit faster and had more stuff to fight the Lings. It just, it would have been interesting to see how it would have gone if he would have reinforced. And I would love to know, was there just too much Microphobus or was that a little bit of, oh my God, this player is tricky and scary. And if I reinforce, is he just gonna have a trap that's gonna eat my reinforcements? Like, I don't know. I don't know why the reinforcements didn't happen. Yeah, we'll, we'll never know. But Terror and Nemo are gonna be our winners today Indeed they are. congratulations so want to say thank you yeah congratulations I want to say thank you to mr zero of course for setting this tournament up of course mr blizzard for sponsoring it this is one of the few tournaments that i even that i remember ever that blizzard sponsored so that's a huge deal for me. big thanks to them and of course thank you 
for L Master casting with me today. Yeah, my pleasure. I think it's the first time we've had a chance to cast together, so another person I've had a chance now to, to cast a little bit with. Yeah, it was fun, and we had great games. So next week, we're going to have Group B and Group D. Now, if you can only watch one series, you should watch Group D. Why? Because I'm going to be funny. <laughs> go Nyokin, go Caster. So hopefully we can put on a good showing there. But in all honesty, Group B is a, a very nice group also. I think that is Group B of Death, right? Is that TT1, Gory Niche? Is it Dandy? And I, I can't remember who the last one is, but regardless, this group is hella stacked. Like, it doesn't get better than this. <laughs> so you should definitely check out that group also. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for us. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next week. Yeah, thanks for having us, Zero. Thanks for organizing the tournament. And see, see you guys all later.